Hello, my name is Alex and I am a professional 3D artist studying the fine arts independently. And today I will be talking about master studies. I decided to do a master study to see where I am in my art. I've technically done this, this specific artist before and I just want to see where I was at. And so far, I think I definitely advanced a little bit, but not that much. Let's start off with what exactly is a master study and how will it improve your art? Let's start off with the history. Now, master studies have been done for like centuries by many famous artists and also people are doing it today still. It's not just recreating like an art piece. It is learning and examining what techniques the artists use, what fundamentals you are lacking in, and is also a way to try to gain inspiration. Back in the day, a lot of students would copy their master's work just to figure out where they are, or sometimes to help with commissions. Van Gogh copied Manette the Diggers from 1850 to 1855 and that was the inspiration for his painting to farmers dating and apparently van gogh was a huge fan of minette's paintings so he just decided to just copy him and try to do it his way now i'm not sure if this was looked down upon back in the day but since a lot of artists did it i don't think it was taken seriously i think it was seen as learning or just recreating it in their style picasso has a famous quote Good artists copy, great artists steal. And he practiced what he preached and made 27 versions of Ed Edward Manet munching on the grass, which was actually a copy or heavily inspired from Titian's pastoral concert from 1509. And when Picasso made these 27 versions, he basically literally stole it. He did not like make a recreation line by line where it can obviously be seen as a recreation. He took the tones, he took the composition, the coloring, he took all of it and made a new piece, which is basically stealing, but not in like the most malicious way. For this drawing, I did a master study of Men Reading by J.C. Lane Decker in 1914. It is an oil on canvas, which is why I don't think I did a good job copying it because I wish I used like acrylic or a gouache or even oil itself to try to copy it even more thoroughly. But I decided to just stick with thinking about composition. Composition is basically where everything in the image is placed and arranged. It's mainly used to create a focal point to give the art piece some structure and to add some sort of balance, whether it's some sort of imbalance or like perfectly balanced like in a Wes Anderson film composition. You can also simply just use the rule of thirds or golden ratio or even triangles to have as a guideline if you are trying to pay attention more to your composition in your drawing. But a lot of times artists just go with the flow. And for me, I, I think I got the composition correctly and I really like the colors. Like I did go brighter than what was intended, but I think brightening the colors made it more interesting and less boring. Though I do love, I do love his work, but um, I definitely did not get the proportions right. And I think that's one thing I really need to work on because I really don't like how I do faces and I'm planning on to try to get my face proportions right. Um, let me know if you'd like to see me sketch a full page of different faces or if you're interested in seeing me doing studies and whether you want me to talk through them and my thought process. Because for this, I, I'm not going to give my thought process because I was just looking at the painting, looking back, looking at the painting, looking back. And I really had a hard time matching colors, which is why the colors are also a lot brighter. I am not using paint, I'm using color pencils. And I know you can blend and mix color pencils together. But I am not that good with color pencils yet, but I may switch to maybe using a gouache or using maybe some alcohol markers. I have not decided yet. And the difference between color pencils and paint is like you can really like paint and blend colors a lot more accurately. 
or colored pencils i feel like i'm having a lot of issues making the colors blend together and so i'm trying with colored pencils i think i'm just going to just not mix them i'm just going to do like a more bold approach where it's like chunks of color and that's what i learned from doing this master study thing <laughs> I just, I was just like, yeah, I just, I'm going to block these off and try not to think about blending them that much. With that, I'm like, okay, I kind of know what I'm going to do with color pencils. And I also know that I don't like color pencils because <laughs> I hate it going back and forth between all the colors. And if I'm, I was thinking the entire time, if I had like paint, I will just blend one color together and make a big pile of it and just use that to like do things like I do with the digital painting. I do the exact same thing. I'll have like, this is the color of the hair. This is the shading for the skin, clothes and shadows and have it all arranged on an art palette. And I have them all mixed together perfectly in my uh, little box where you mix colors in. And I use that, but like, okay, this I can go back on if something goes wrong. And with colored pencils, I cannot do that. It sucks. But back to master studies. What my advice is to do is not be too much of a perfectionist and be like, well, it has to look exactly like the painting or exactly like the drawing because that is not what you're trying to do. You are not recreating or restoring any artwork for a museum, which the, I, I can see that as the only reason to do it, but just to learn from it, basically. You can like, you know, obviously like sell it or publish it or something like that, but you can't just take it like an art, like a, an actual art thief. You just take the drawing as yours, copy it one from one tracing, and like, yeah, this is mine. There's no inspiration to it at all whatsoever. No, it's, you can acknowledge that this is a master study and it's also best to do a master study of someone of like a master artist. They don't have to be dead <laughs> and maybe not do modern, like super modern artists like Sam does art, I think that's his name, or Ross Draws. Those you can learn from, especially since they're teaching. I feel like it's like way too easy to copy the work, but I don't know, I haven't tried yet. Personally, I am not super interested of copying modern artists today. Like I grab bits and pieces, but I probably am not willing to do like a master study of anybody's work today. It is good for like SEO and to get like shown up on the, um, algorithms of the different social media platforms but I, I think not too many people know what you know a master study is versus co like copying and stealing someone's art because I see a lot of artists online get accused for stealing or like well, yeah technically they did steal but I don't think they traced anything and honestly tracing isn't too bad as long as it's like a hand or like a leg position just something you can't get right immediately and you're like well this is perfect so i'm gonna copy it right quick and personally i think that's fine especially if you're very green at uh making art but it would be better if you just do studies than just constantly falling back on tracing a reference work master studies help you figure out what you're lacking it helps you figure out where you need to start focusing on like for me it's proportions really need to focus on that and also I was able to see where my skill level was. Am I a good artist? Yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm not great yet. <laughs> like I'm not stellar, but I do like this piece because I like how it's covering the entire page and like half the pieces in black. And I kind of like that composition a lot and it makes me want to start doing this more. And it also inspired me to do more uh, Layne Decker's work. Cause I love his work. It's really good. I got his book. <laughs> Uh, I learned about his lifestyle and everything. He seems like a pretty party heavy guy. <laughs> but through making his men reading master study, I was able to understand the process of his work. Uh, I was able to see why he chose his lighting, why the composition looked so appealing to my eye. And it was a very direct way to learn from him. Like. I love how he renders so much. I'm trying to, my best to try to figure out how to apply that to my artwork. And I have a few examples here where I attempted that, <laughs> but I, I love it. And you can do this for other artists if you like certain things about their art. Michelangelo and his line work, and, or Monet and his color, or Picasso and his composition. 
you if you are lacking something you can always like grab those artists and see how they did what they did it's also like studying the fundamentals in a way but you create an art piece <laughs> in the end and get to compare exactly where you lack but while researching for this uh, video i've seen a lot of artists a lot of times they do that and when they compare their work to the master's work they feel like they're not good enough they feel like they're not doing a good job and makes them feel insignificant and i feel really really bad for those artists because that is not the point of doing a master study after you do your master study I would suggest doing something purely creative and implementing a bit of that master study in there. Currently, I am working on a work in progress that is doing that so I can have a bit of fun. And it's not like a one to one thing. Like, I think I chose like a similar pose uh, I should have on the screen, but I did something very similar to one of his art pieces that I like the composition of and just have fun with it. Do not just focus on study, 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 because that is a very easy way to get burnout on making art. Recently, that is what happened to me. I burn myself all, out a lot because I have an anxiety where I just constantly need to like work on something. And I feel guilty like playing video games or reading web comics. But I spent a while reading the Andrew Loomis book and working on the exercises and I burnt myself out, which is why this week I didn't post that much. And also daylight savings time really screwed me over. But Andrew Loomis uh, has several books on figure drawing and learning the proportions and the anatomy of the human body. And he also created the Loomis method, which is basically we do the circle, chop up the sides of circle, add it, add more, uh, add a square or a triangle, I forgot. And you just add more facial features to it. Personally, I use that a bit. I use like a combo between Loomis and like another method, because that's just what I naturally do. I mainly do an oval though, but sometimes I'll do the Loomis method if I'm drawing at a particular angle. That I can't figure out is great to fall back on that and not just stick to one way to draw things because things can get into a specific perspective or angle where you're like this method would really help with this <laughs> and sometimes uh you can use the same method but i tend to just bounce around to see what works best and i wanted to do this in color pencil because i do not have any paint i may use digital paint instead to do more studies but i did a poll i think a couple of weeks ago and you guys like traditional art and i think i know why <laughs> a lot of ai art has been popping up and a lot of artists has been despising it like hating it at first i was like ah, this isn't that bad but a lot of artists like my job and i'm like I don't think your job's in trouble. <laughs> I hope not, honestly. I feel like AI art is just a gimmicky tool that's gonna become popular for a bit and maybe the industries will use it for certain things, but working for clients in the corporate world, I, I, I don't think <laughs> they're way too picky. They're way too specific. Unless you're working with a client who's like, ah, I don't care. Just do some, do this. And they're like happy with every, anything. Yeah, I can see where AI can come in. But I don't think any Fortune 500, like I don't think a graphic designer is in danger of losing their job because of AI. I think their boss is like, hey, I need you to use AI. And they're like, okay. <laughs> At least I hope so. Again, I'm, I'm more of an optimi optimist on this because years ago, people thought drawing digitally was cheating. 100%. They thought, oh, that's cheating. You're, you're doing it digitally. I'm like, eh, technically it's not, <laughs> not even technically, it's not cheating. I still have to draw. I still have to draw fundament. Like you can't throw in a person who's never drawn in their life before and tell and give them the clip studio paint and tell them draw a masterpiece. And they just, they won't at all. Personally, I feel like if you use the fundamentals of art, it's art if you have any thought into it or expression through visual media or sound it's art 
no matter what anyone says. And AI art does not have any of that or is thinking of that. I guess you can program it to have those thoughts, but I don't know. It's not human, so I don't think it's art really. I did enjoy the master studying this uh, piece. I like the lamp. I like that there's the couch, though I feel like the couch is literally my weakest point. But uh, yeah, also you may notice the quality of video is way better than before. And the lighting is better than before because I figured out exactly how I want to film things. And I am attempting to be a bit more cinematic. So maybe in the next video I get different angles of my drawing process to try to get the process look more interesting because it's just stagnant for now and I want to move it around more maybe insert some other shots of me like sharpening the pencil or me researching inspiration I don't know I'll figure it out in the end but try doing different master studies of different artists that you enjoy looking at even if they're modern but I would tread carefully with that. Be sure to credit the artist and be sure to, I guess, ask the artist. A lot of times I don't feel like asking the artist because I feel like they're way too busy or they probably have a flood of people in their inboxes and I'm just like, eh, I'll just credit them. They'll see it when they see it. <laughs> Cause I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like waiting days or whatever, or I'm just like, I want to do this now. <laughs> I'm too impatient. <laughs> All right, we are at the tail end of my drawing process. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something, exactly what a master study is. It's not recreating one for one. It is studying bits and pieces of a drawing or painting to improve your own style, to gain inspiration, or to just get out of an art block. It is fundamental to at least attempt a few of these to see where you are in your art journey. So far, I am probably very beginner intermediate. I, I wouldn't say I'm a beginner, but just very light intermediate. I definitely need to improve in the fundamentals because I did not study them throughout my entire art journey until now. Be sure to study the fundamentals if you are an artist yourself. It will help you improve and help you understand why things look the way they do. Many modern artists use it nowadays, even if they don't post their studies. But I've noticed nowadays, a lot of people are posting hand studies, lighting studies. And it's very, very, very inspirational. It's very good to show this to beginner artists so they can realize, oh, instead of me just having a drawing, let me do a page of studies so I can figure out exactly how to improve, which is really, really good. And I want to implement that into my channel and onto my other social medias too. Okay, if you have any artwork you want me to master study from or any artists that you're interested to see my take on, and I hope you did something creative today, whether it's taking a photo or sketching a plant or even just observing other artwork. Hope you did it. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>